Thank you, Jim. All right. Good to see everybody. Man, y'all look good today. Y'all glad you're here? All right. You might want to take a guess what I'm preaching on today? Just going to take a guess. So if you have your Bibles, turn to Psalm 1. Psalm number 1. And um, I am going to begin a sermon series today simply titled Blessed. And um, so as you're turning to Psalm 1, here's what I want you to do. I want you to look at the person next to you. Say, I'm blessed. That was terrible. (laughs) Say it like you mean it, guys. Say, I'm blessed. blessed. Now keep looking at them. Now tell them you're blessed. You're blessed. (laughs) Guys, here's a reality. If you are in Christ today, you are blessed. And with that being said, I want to just clear something up about blessings and God's blessings. Because many times we, we get God's blessings mixed up. Because here's how we, we look at God's blessings. We look at God's blessings by material things that we have. Now, is there anything wrong with having stuff? But guys, that necessarily doesn't constitute God's blessings upon our lives because we have stuff. Why do I know that? Because people who don't know Christ have stuff. And by the way, guys, stuff that we have, whether it's a home, car, money, whatever it is, guess what? One day, it's going to be non-existent. Because here's what I know about money. (laughs) Number one, if you have a wife, you have no money. I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Jim. Save me, brother. <laughs> I've got a place for me and you, but I got me and you a place to sleep both of us tonight, brother. We're, we're good. We can stay here at the church, man. We're good. Money has to have a place to be spent, right? Here's what I know about a car. One day that car is going to eventually break down, right? Anybody have a car that they still drove, you know, it has like 900,000 miles on it? Kelly does her name is Fancy (laughs) but guess what one day Fancy's gonna die don't want to destroy your excitement about Fancy but fix my collar okay here's what I know about a house one day a house will eventually rot and decay so guys material stuff will eventually just be all wood wood hay and stubble one day but what I want to talk about, guys, for the next weeks to come, guys, in this series is about God's blessings that we have and focus on the spiritual blessings that we all have and joy and we enjoy as children of God. Because, again, so many times, we, like I said, guys, we get mixed. If, if, we're not, if we don't have stuff, we don't feel like we're being blessed by God. If we're not rich, we're not being blessed by God. This is what drives me crazy about the prosperity gospel. Because, again, the prosperity gospel preaches what? If you're blessed by God, the more money you have, the more possessions you have, the more blessed you are by God and the closer you are to God. Guys, number one, that is not biblical. Period. It is not in the Scriptures. Now, were there blessed men in the Scripture? Yeah, King Solomon had some stuff. But he also has some problems. And we won't talk about his female issues that he had his 700 wives and 300 concubines which kept him broke my wife said that not me that came from her mouth but when we come to Psalm 1 guys you're going to be introduced to the three different types of people actually I think four different types of people that we're going to talk about today and when we think about being blessed by God I want us to, to leave here today and in the coming weeks guys just knowing how blessed we are as children of God Number one, here's the thing, guys. If you are a child of God, you have eternal life. You know what eternal means? It means forever. It means one day, guys, listen, when these bodies break down and they eventually die and this, that, and the other, guys, we have the awesome privilege and joy of knowing that we'll spend eternity in a place called heaven with the person who died for us, Jesus Christ. How much more blessed can we be? We'll get to go see loved ones that have gone on before us and we'll get to enjoy the the mansions and the street of gold and everything else that heaven's got. That's ours. We possess that. 
And guys, again, I've said this many times from this pulpit, if God never does another thing for me as far as being blessed, just knowing that I'm saved eternally is enough for me. But I'm thankful that his blessings don't stop at just salvation. His blessings continue in our lives. So Psalm 1, look what he says. Look what the psalmist says. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked or ungodly, nor stands in the path or way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers, the scornful. But look, guys, his delight is where? In the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. And as a result of that, as a result of being blessed, and again, meditating upon the law of the Lord, which is the word of God, he is like a tree planted by streams of water that yield its fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither. And all that he does, he does what? Prospers. Now, guys, again, not prospers as far as financially, but he prospers in his relationship with God because he's delighting where? And here, here's what I know, guys. The more that we delight and meditate upon the Word of God, the more we desire to do what? Again, our desires will start to line up, and our delights will start to line up with what desires God has for us. And when that happens, we become blessed. He meditates. The wicked are not so, but are like the chaff that the wind drives away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. Now, let me give you a couple definitions of, of the word bless. Webster's Dictionary defines bless as bringing pleasure, contentment, or good fortune. Here's what I believe biblically, and, and I believe this would be a simple definition of the word blessed biblically. And, and again, when you study, by the way, the word blessed is mentioned 67 different times just in the Psalms. Blessed. I believe biblically, when you study the word blessed, here's what you'll find. Fully satisfied. Guys, as children of God, when you have Jesus Christ in your life, you should be fully satisfied. Because when Jesus is all we have, we have more than we'll ever need. Guys, there, there's nothing in this world that we can gather or we can have in our possessions that is more important or of greater value than a relationship that we have with God Almighty. Nothing. I don't care how rich you are. I don't care how big your house is. I don't care how nice your car is. Guys, it all pales in comparison to being blessed by having a relationship with God. I got saved at 28, and some of you got saved later. Some of you got saved earlier than 28. And I can promise you this, guys. I've never been more blessed in my life. God has blessed me. And again, guys, he's blessed me in more ways than I could ever imagine. But what I want to focus on today, and like I said, for the weeks to come, guys, is our blessed life because of our relationship with God Almighty. And as we see this, there's two thoughts I want to share with you this morning. And by the way, Psalm 1 is what we refer to as a wisdom psalm. And again, it focuses on God's word. It focuses on God's blessing. It focuses on the benefits of obeying and meditating upon the word of God. And, and again, that great relationship that we have with God. But two thoughts I want to share with you this morning as we talk about how we can be blessed in our lives. And the first one is this, guys. Is, is, again, we look at verse number one again. Is don't believe the ways of the wicked. Don't believe the ways of the wicked. 1 John 5, 19 says this. We know that we are of God. The whole world lies in wickedness. Now, what, let, me see, let, let me show you the progression of believing the wicked. Let me, let me have a volunteer up here. Who wants to volunteer? I will volunteer you to do something if you don't volunteer. <laughs> John Flanagan. Hey, I'm buying your lunch today. <laughs> Matter of fact, I'm buying everybody's lunch today. How's that? That's the way this kind of guy I am today. Everybody's looking at me, man, that's a good deal. Just meet me at the gym, and I'll pay for everybody. Now, just go ahead and start walking. And just keep walking until I tell you to stop. Because I want you to see the progression we have here. Here's where it starts, guys. What is the first thing? Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly or the counsel of the, of the wicked. And again, this is the person, guys, that listens to advice and encourages people to live their lives with no regard for the righteousness or no, no regard for obedience to God. 
avoid those people. If you've got people in your life, guys, that are, that are teaching you and counseling you and telling you to disregard the things of God, the obedience to God, and living righteously, do you think we should be hanging out with those types of people? And again, the word walk, guys, has the idea of continually walking. And so you're listening to this counsel, right, as you're walking, and you're continually listening, continually listening, and then what's the next step in the progression? Stop. Stand. Now he goes from walking to standing. What happens, listen, how many of you have ever just been in a conversation with your spouse and you're just, you're doing 15 other things as you're listening to your spouse? Right, you're walking, your wife's trying to talk to you and, and you're walking, and yeah, 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 right? And then she'll tell you to do what? Stop. Why does she tell you to stop? Because you're not listening. Or you are listening, but again, it's, it's, not, it's not really penetrating. But now the progression is, as a result of listening to the wicked and believing the lies of the wicked, now you're standing. And when you're standing, what's happening now? As you're still listening to the counsel of the ungodly. Now it's getting into you. So now he's standing and, and listening. And look what it says. Don't sit, don't, don't stand in the way of sinners, guys. Again, this path, this way, this road, this direction. And again, sinners have a path where they stand. So what is the psalmist strongly warning us to do? To not stand. But it doesn't stop there. Now we've, we're walking, we're continually walking, we're listening to this unwise counsel, this ungodly counsel. Now we've stopped, and again, and when you stop and when you stand, guys, it, it becomes a little bit more dangerous. Then what happens? Go ahead and have a seat. You sit wherever you want. Sit in the floor, sit in a pew. What ha how many of you have a favorite chair? What do you do when you sit in that chair? Oh man, it's it's you're 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 in it, right? You're getting comfortable. You're you're. I mean, again, you you you've checked out, right? Guys, here's the danger of believing the wicked. It's because now it starts with walking, standing, and now because you've listened to, to the wicked so often, guys, now you've become comfortable. And when you sit down, what happens in that nice chair? You get comfortable. And so now you've listened to the ungodly and the wicked for so long, guys. You've listened to that unwise, ungodly counsel that you're no longer standing, you're no longer walking in it. Now it's overtaking your life. Do you think for one single second, guys, that God blesses the wicked? Now you say, well, it rains on the just and the unjust. I get that, guys. But I also know this, guys. The more and more I study Scripture, I also know this. Satan also blesses. And what I mean by blessing, Satan, again, will give you material possessions, thinking that they're of God, right? Thinking that you're blessed because you have all this stuff, knowing that you don't have a right relationship with God himself, as I've said this before, I believe the most dangerous verse in Scripture is 1 Corinthians 11, 4, where it refers to Satan as an angel of light. Let me ask you this. Does Satan make stuff look good? <laughs> Listen, he started all the way back in the garden. You'll be like God. Man, that sounds good, doesn't it? And how do you think that piece of fruit look, man? Well, that was a good-looking piece of fruit, wasn't it? Listen, if, if, let's just say it was an apple for argument's sake. It doesn't say it was an apple, but just for argument's sake. If it had a worm coming out of it, you think Eve would have ate it? Probably not. But guys, Satan has a way of, again, making blessings look so good that we think they're from God, when in essence, in reality, guys, they're really not from God. They're from Satan himself. But what happens is, guys, when we start hanging out with the wicked and ungodly, what we start doing is we start buying into their life. And the very minute you get comfortable, you sit in that chair, 
you know that chair, man. It's already got your, your, your butt in it, and it's perfect, right? You get comfortable. Ten minutes later, you're asleep. Your wife takes the remote out of your hand, and you, said, I, you, know, you wake up and say, I was watching that. Right? You all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> and she'll look at me like, you're lying? What did they just say? I'm like, I don't know. I wasn't paying attention. That's because you were asleep. Guys, here's the reality about Satan. And, and again, I don't want to give Satan too much credit. I don't want to talk about him too much. But guys, Satan is real. He's just as real as God is. We know God's got a plan for our life. But also know Satan's got a plan for our life. Satan's plan is to seek and to devour, to kill, to steal, and to destroy. God's plan is to come and give us life and give it more abundantly. To give us a blessed life. But guys, we can't be blessed by God if we are listening to the ways of the wicked. And, and again, when we talk about Satan and we talk about his path, he has a plan of rebellion against God, and that's the counsel of the ungodly. Guys, that's rebellion against God. How many times do we see in, in the New Testament Paul addressing letters about people preaching false gospels? Do you think the false gospel is still being preached today? Absolutely, guys. You know why? People are now teaching, and by the way, when I say people, guys, I'm talking about churches that used to be Jesus is the only way to heaven are now saying, no, there may be more than one way to heaven. Guys, this clears it up for me. <laughs> when Jesus said he's the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes to the Father but by him, it seals it for me. He is the only way to eternal life. But the wicked want us to believe that you can be a good person or if you just do enough works or if you just whatever. That's what Satan's plan is. To get you to believe that, yeah, I can make my own way to heaven. Or guess what? We got three people that are being baptized today. Guess what? Them going under this water and being baptized is not what saves them. You know what saved them? Them putting their faith and trust in Jesus Christ and Jesus alone. Believing they are sinners separated from God, believing that Jesus paid their sin debt, he died on the cross, he was buried and rose again three days later. And when they called upon him by faith, that's what got them into heaven. Them being baptized is just their first step of obedience and them showing you that they're going to be, make a commitment to serve God. They're not going to deny God. They want to make it known that they're proud of being a child of God. And they want to obey God. They want to be obedient. But again, Satan, again, has his plan. Rebellion. And again, he has this road to carry out his plan, the way of sinners. And then he has a seat where he plans to lead people. So guys, it goes from walking to standing to sitting. Dangerous, dangerous, dangerous. And I say all that to say this, guys. Don't hang out with people like that get away from them and, and can I just say this to you please listen to this young people it is okay for you to be different grown ups it is okay for us to be different matter of fact the Bible teaches us as children of God that we are different we're strange <laughs> amen anybody like being called that but we are. We're, listen, guys, we're foreigners to people because we're different. And what makes us different is, is, again, who we belong to. That's what makes us different. And, again, it's okay for us to be different. We don't have to bow. Listen to me, guys. We don't have to bow down to the ways of the world. As a matter of fact, my Bible says, Come out from among them and be ye separate. My Bible also says, listen, don't be yoked up with unbelievers. My Bible also says, flee even the appearance of temptation. Run from it. Guys, if it's not of God, get away from it. And this is what the psalmist is clearly teaching us. Now, should we have friends that are ungodly? Yes. You know why? Because, again, they need Jesus. But when their impact becomes greater in our lives than our impact for Christ becomes in their life, then we've got a problem. 
Because one minute you're walking, you're listening to the counsel of the ungodly. The next thing, you're standing in the way in the path of sinners. And then before you know it, you're sitting in the seat of the scornful. You know what scornful means, guys? A total contempt for God. I don't want to be around anybody, guys, that has total contempt towards God. Hatred. They may never say they hate God, but their lifestyle speaks otherwise. So if we want to be blessed, number one, don't believe the wicked. And number two, believe God's word. Pretty simple outline, wasn't it? Psalms are pretty simple. <laughs> I love preaching the Psalms because I get easy outlines because the outlines speak for themselves. Just believe God's word. And you say, well, pastor, that's simple. I know. <laughs> it is simple. But do we live it? Again, do we spend enough time in the word of God to allow the word of God just to get into us? How many believe faith still comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God? Anybody still believe that? Anybody believe that all Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable? Anybody still believe that? Why do we believe all that? Because it's in the Bible. Do we still believe in six literal 24 days of creation and on the seventh day God rested? Why do we believe that? It's in the Bible. Do we believe there's still one way to heaven? <laughs> Why? Because it's in the Bible. Do we believe that Jesus is coming back? Why? Because it's in the Bible. <laughs> Simple. But why are you preaching it then, Pastor? Because it's not so simple. We can say one thing, guys, and completely live another way. And, and I love what he says here, guys. And, and again, this is it's so clear. Like I said, guys, it, it's, it's, it's almost astounding how simple it is. Look at verse number two again. His delight is where? Now again, we just saw three different characters that the psalmist mentioned, right? When you are spending time meditating and taking pleasure in God's word, I will promise you this. Listen to me. Promise you this. Number one, you will be able to discern the ungodly and the scornful and the way of sinners. You'll be able to pick up on the teachings. Number two, you won't want nothing to do with wickedness and ungodliness. Why? Because your delight is where? In the Word of God and in the things of God. You won't delight in that old lifestyle. You won't delight in what the world has to offer. And by the way, guys, the world has nothing to offer you. Jesus has everything to offer you. And so again, when you delight and when you meditate, and I love the word meditate, guys, it doesn't have this idea of you sitting around with your legs crossed and crying out. And, mm, and That's not what it's talking about, guys. It means you strongly ponder and think about what is being taught. How many times have we picked up the Word of God and just read it? and not meditate upon it. You know the word success is mentioned one time in Scripture. Joshua 1.8. And you know what success has to do with in Joshua 1.8? The Word of God. Because you know where our success and our blessedness lies, guys? In the Word of God. In our relationship with the writer of the Word of God. That's where we're blessed. And when we delight in it, when we take pleasure in what we're reading, even the hard stuff, anybody read some stuff that just messed you up? I don't like that. I don't like when God messes me up. Because, you know, I'm thinking I've got it all together, and then I read something, I'm like, man, I'm wicked. I'm ungodly. I'm not right with God. But then it also helps me, again, because it penetrates my spirit. And I allow it to. I allow the Holy Spirit to work in my life. And as a result of that, guys, I want to be more like Him. Because now my delight's where? Not in the ways of the world, not in the ways of the wicked, but my delight is in the Word of God. Let me ask you this. Is the Word of God still change people? 
listen to me you who are saved is it still changing your life even after salvation it better be and this is what I love about the word of God because again it's not just written for a certain group of people guys it's written for you and I as well the same God that changed the life of Moses, who I believe wrote Psalm 1, is the same God that changes your life. And by the way, he changed Moses' life the same way he changed his life, through the law of the Lord, which is the Word of God. Do you think Moses took pleasure in it? Yes. Do you think David took pleasure in it? Do you think Paul took pleasure in it? Do you think Luke took pleasure in it? And you know what else, guys? They didn't have all that we have. We have it in its entirety. We have the completed Word of God. So we should be even more blessed. Amen? And we should take... Somebody go out there and stand for a minute and <laughs> let's get a video. We should take pleasure and delight and meditate upon god's word because it's still changing us and transforming us guys and, and again it here's two things about the god, god's word number one it gives you strength let me ask you this this morning how many of you need some strength guys, when i say strength i'm not talking about just your physical strength i'm talking about just you're mentally drained and you're emotionally drained you're spiritually drained and you just need the strength of god i love the illustrations that the psalm that moses uses here when you meditate and when you delight in the law of the Lord, he is like a tree planted by streams of water. What do, wa what do trees need to survive? Water. He said, listen, here's what the Word of God does. It's, listen, it, it's like a tree planted by where? You know what I love about that, guys? God's reminding us that not only did he provide the tree but he also provides what is needed for the tree in order for it to survive. Here's what I mean by that, guys. Not only has God saved us, but he has given to us everything that we need in the Scripture in order for us to live a life that is blessed. He didn't just leave us out here by ourselves wandering around and how do I figure life out and how can I live and how can I be successful and how can I be blessed by God? No, he's given us the instruction manual in how to be blessed by God. How can I get strength? God, I need your strength today. You know where your strength comes from? Spending time meditating and taking pleasure in the word of God. Not by listening to something else, not by by these, these, these motivational tapes and, and, and I don't want you leaving here thinking I'm against motivational speakers because I'm not actually I am I don't want to lie <laughs> unless they're preaching this guys you know what motivates me every day this am I perfect absolutely not do I mess up yes my wife and my kids are here they'll attest to it but guys, I try my best every single day to live what I read. I don't want to just be a hearer of the word. I want to be a doer of it. I say that to encourage you because, again, I don't want you to feel like if there's days that you don't live up to this book that you're a failure because you're not. But you know what Satan wants to convince you that you are? You're a failure because you can never live up to the word of God. So quit. He's a liar. But our strength comes from God. We're like that tree planted. But he also gives us another illustration, the chaff. How many farmers? Anybody know what chaff is? You know, there's, there's a kernel that would fall out of it, and it would fall down to the threshing floor, and all that would be left is the chaff, and, and it's the, the, the wasteful stuff, the stuff that's not needed. It's unnecessary. And I love how he uses the illustration that the wind blows against both of them. But what happens to the person that delights herself in the Lord and meditates on his word day and night? He's like that tree that's planted by the water. And by the way, Jesus Christ gives living water. That's where your strength comes from. 
But the same wind that blows against the tree also blows against the chaff. And what happens to the chaff? Blows away. Guys, you know the parable in the, in the New Testament of the two builders? One built their house upon, isn't there a children's song? The wise man built his house upon the rock. I'm not going to sing it, but y'all know it. And the foolish man built his house upon sand. And when the storm came, what happened? What happened to the house that was built upon the rock? It withstood the storm. But what happened, church, to the house that, to the builder that built his house upon the sand? When the storm came, it washed the house away. Guys, there will be storms in your life day in and day out. And again, if you don't have the right foundation, when the storms come, guess what? You're going to be like that foolish builder that built his house upon the, stand, upon the sand instead of the wise builder that, again, that is meditating upon God's Word, that is delighting in the Word of God, and that has got his roots deeply grounded in the Word of God. The more you get rooted and grounded in God's Word, the stronger you become. Why? Because when the storms come, you know where you can turn to, and his name is Jesus. But when you don't have that foundation, it's sinking sand. When the storm comes, now you're questioning everything. Why is this storm happening? Why am I going through this? Why, why is this happening? Why is this happening? Why is the world the way that it is? So my question to you today is this. Do you want to be like the tree? Or do you want to be like the chaff? I want to be like the tree. Because you know what, guys? That person is blessed. Blessed. Anybody want to be blessed today? You want to be more blessed than what you already are? Delight yourself in the Word of God. Read it and allow it to penetrate your heart as well, guys. And then the second thing I want you to see, number two, it brings salvation. Did you hear me? God's Word brings salvation. Again, if you need to be saved today, let me just tell you this morning, there's a way for you to be saved today. There's only one way for you to be saved today. And again, faith comes by hearing, Romans 10, 17, and hearing by the Word of God. And so again, we know that, it, that again, that the Word of God brings salvation. Guys, again, Satan has so many ways that look good and seem right, but at the end of it brings, dis brings destruction. It sounds good. Listen to me. It sounds good that you can work your way to heaven. That sounds good, doesn't it? But then the person who thinks that they can get to heaven by work salvation now starts to question, how much work do I have to do? Is it just one act of service or do I have to do multiple acts of service? And when I lay my head down on my pillow tonight, did I do enough today of works to gain favor with God? Or people that believe that baptism saves them. And then again, they put their trust in Christ. They make this profession of faith. They believe, again, what the preacher said, that Jesus is the only way to heaven. But they come to the end of their life, and they say, you know what? I've never been baptized. I'm about to die. So there's no way I can go to heaven without being baptized. That sounds good, right? Baptism sounds good as far as salvation is concerned. Well, here's the best one. Church attendance sounds really good, doesn't it? If I just go to church enough, if I just spend enough time in, inside the building, God's got to let me into heaven. That sounds good, doesn't it? And by the way, guys, every single one of those are lies from Satan. Is church good? Is it good for you to be here today? So y'all didn't hear me. Seven of you did. I was seven. I heard seven voices. It's good for you to be here. But you being here today, guys, doesn't punch your ticket into heaven. Apart from a relationship with Christ, you're not going to heaven. Jesus said, unless a man is born again, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. And being born again involves a relationship with Christ. His death, his burial, and his resurrection, and us by faith believing that he died for us in our place, became sin for us who knew no sin, so that we can become the righteousness of God in him. 
It brings salvation. And salvation is only one way. Guys, I've said this many times from this pulpit. I will never understand how much God loves me. I won't. Because I think to myself daily, guys, how could somebody like God, somebody who is perfect, and somebody who is holy and, and without sin and, and who is completely righteous and love somebody who is the complete opposite of all those things. But then I get into his word. I don't have to understand how much he loves me. I just have to believe that he does. And I just have to believe that he gave his life for me to give me salvation. Guys, we serve a great God. A, a God that is, that is infinite, a God that's always been, a, and he is the great I am, and he's given us his word to enjoy. He's given us his word to give us strength, but he's also given us his word, guys, to bring us salvation. And my question to you today is this. Have you ever been saved? Are you here today saying, you know what? I just thought being in this church building was good enough today. Listen, I planned on putting a little money in the offering box back there when we left today, and I thought maybe that would be good enough. I paid my way to heaven. Can I just tell you this, guys? That's never worked either. Because how much money do you have to pay? Isn't it better to just trust in Jesus and Jesus alone? Isn't it just more simple to believe that? I don't have to do anything? Well, yeah, you do. You have to believe. You have to trust. You have to call upon. You have to live a life that bears fruit. Which brings me to the final thing, guys. I'm done. It brings salvation, but guys, also, we are blessed to be a blessing to others. We are blessed to be a blessing to others. You know the greatest blessing I can be to you today is this. I can share the gospel with you. You know the greatest way you can be a blessing to your family, your friends, and your loved ones? Share Jesus with them. Share the gospel. That's the greatest way you can be a blessing. You can, be, you can show the blessings of God. Because again, when I look at this, look at verse number five again. The wicked will not stand in the judgment nor sinners in the, in the congregation of the righteous. The Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the ways of the wicked will do what? Perish. Get your Bible open again. Everybody just, just look at Psalm 1. What's the first word in Psalm 1? Blessed. And what's the last word in Psalm 1? Perish. You know what perish means, guys? It basically means, in its simplest form, to die off. Good timing. I hope nobody was standing underneath that because they're perishing right now. Here's the way I'm going to close today, guys. You have two options. There's only two gods that you serve in this world. You either serve the God of heaven or you serve the God of this world and his name is Satan. You can't have it both ways. There is no third option. There is no what in between. No, there's only one of two ways. Heaven or hell. You can either be blessed today and know Christ as your Savior or you can walk out of here once again taking your chances of dying perishing without a relationship with Christ guys to me it's a no brainer you know that was the same question that was posed to me 20 something years ago I said man I want to be blessed because man I don't want to spend one second in hell I don't want to spend one second separated from eternity in eternity from God 
Listen, I want to see my loved ones that have gone before me. I want to see my Jesus. I want to see the beauties of heaven. I want to be blessed. So you need to ask yourself today, checking your relationship. I don't know your heart. I don't know where you're standing with God is today. I don't know if you can honestly say, man, Pastor Tim, man, I am blessed because I know God. I know Christ is my Savior. I don't know that. God does, and you do. But I do know this. I want to give you an opportunity. Listen, I want you to leave here today a new creature in Christ. I want you to leave here today blessed. Blessed not because you have money, not because of anything else. Blessed because you have Jesus Christ as your Savior. That's the question you need to ask yourself today. Am I saved? Am I blessed? Let's bow our heads for prayer. Heads bowed and eyes closed. We ask the praise team to make their way to the front, to the stage. And as they are coming, let me ask you this question. The most important question I can ask you today. The most important question you can ask yourself today. Can you honestly say beyond a shadow of a doubt that yes, Pastor Tim, I am 100% sure that if I perished, that if I died today, I know that I'm saved. I know I'm going to heaven. And if you can answer yes to that question, praise God today. But if you answer no to that question, Pastor Tim, I'm not sure. Pastor Tim, I am not saved. Listen, the first thing I want to do is I want to pray for you today. So if you just slip up your hand, every, nobody's looking. Every head's bowed and every eye's closed. If you just say, yes, Pastor Tim, I want you to pray for me right now. Would you raise your hand? Thank you. Anyone else? Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else in this building today? Pastor, would you pray for me? I'm not saved. And then for those of you who raised your hand, I want you to listen to me very carefully. The Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Everybody in this building, everybody sitting next to you, behind you, wherever, around you right now, we're all sinners. The Bible says, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The Bible also says, for the wages of sin is death. A wage is what we earn. And what we earn is what is called death. Death not just physically, but spiritually. Death biblically means nothing more than just separation. And the worst kind of death we can all suffer is separation from God in a place called hell, which is just as real as heaven is. But I've got good news for you this morning. Even though the wages of sin is death, God has made a way. He has made it possible for us to be reconciled to Him through His Son. You see, John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, and that whosoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Romans 5, 8 says, But God commendeth, He showed, He proved His love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. You see, Jesus Christ died. He paid the, pay, the wage for He paid your wage. What you rightfully earned and deserve, Jesus paid for it. He died on the cross. He was buried and he rose again three days later. And then Romans chapter number 10 reminds us that with the heart man believeth, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For whosoever whosoever believes whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved and so if you want to be saved today here's what I want you to do I'm going to say a prayer and I want you to repeat after me this prayer but before I do I want you to know this you just saying this prayer will not save you you just reciting some words will not save you 
that you believe in deep, wholeheartedly with your heart today that you're a sinner separated from God, that you're going to cry out to Jesus and ask Him to be your Savior today, that you're going to ask Him to help you and change your life. You're going to turn from your sinful ways and turn to Jesus. So if you want to be saved, just say this, Dear Jesus, I know I'm a sinner, and I deserve hell. But Jesus, today, I believe you died on the cross for my sins. Jesus, today, I ask you, forgive me of my sins. I believe you died on the cross. You were buried, and you rose again three days later. Jesus, today, I ask you to be my Savior. I ask you today to help me live my life in a way that pleases you. Heads are bowed and eyes are still closed. And listen, if you prayed that prayer and you sincerely meant it, nobody's looking. Would you slip up your hand one more time? Say, Pastor, I prayed that prayer and I meant it so I can rejoice with you, so I can pray for you. Thank you, thank you. Anybody else? Yes, Pastor, I prayed that prayer and I sincerely meant it. Thank you. Anybody else? And then maybe you're still struggling. Listen, I'll stick around a little bit after service today. I'll ask Pastor Kyle to stick around as well if you want to come and talk about what it means to be saved. Listen, we want to stick around because, again, we want you to know today the greatest choice, the greatest decision you will ever make is to put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ for your salvation. And the child of God, how about you today? Maybe you've lost your delight in, in God's Word. Maybe, again, you're, you're not delighting in the ways of God anymore. Listen, these altars are open this morning. Listen, if you just need to come and say, Lord, forgive me, I've gotten away from you. But today I'm starting afresh and anew. I'm going to allow, I'm going to take the light in the Word of God. I'm going to meditate upon it. I'm going to allow the Word of God to change me starting today. I'm going to remove myself from the wickedness of this world. I'm going to be that salt and light that this world so desperately needs. Father, we thank you again for your precious Word. Thank you, Lord, for those that received you as their Savior. And Father, for those that may be sitting here today that are still struggling, Father, I pray right now the Holy Spirit of God would just move in their hearts. Father, maybe they would stick around after service today. Father, to just talk to, to myself or Kyle about what it means to be truly saved. And Father, we ask today that you bless this invitation time. We pray the Holy Spirit of God would just move in our midst. In Christ's name, amen. You stand with me if you would.